Oh, feels so nice out. It's like 88, but huge improvement over the last few days. I'm sitting outside, fresh package here from Plant Delights Nursery. If you don't know, if you're just here for the plant haul, I've been building a new area over here to do a shade to part sun garden. It varies from, you know, under the tree to over there. And right now it's mostly a blank canvas and it's an area that I want to plant up with things that are more unique. I mean, they might be, you know, ferns or hostas, but nice varieties of ferns and hostas or just whatnots. You're going to get to see all that in this box. It's not ferns and hostas. Okay, maybe some ferns. Got some cool stuff in here, all from Plant Delights. I have ordered from them so many times that I'm going to breeze through the unboxing part and try and just dive right into the plants that are in there. Okay, this is <laughs> what I decided on for filming too, because the table is currently overrun with pottery that's being glued back together and uh, it's the only spot that has shades the camera's not going to overheat so much and the picture won't be overexposed y'all probably don't care that much about the background when it's an unboxing video the exciting stuff is what's in the package i ordered a bunch of stuff they're all little guys which is good i'm getting long rubber bands they have a lot of rubber bands in their packaging the plants usually come either wrapped in paper with um, shredded paper on the inside to help keep them safe. So that's generally what you get with cactus and succulents. And otherwise, things come in these very nice sleeves that have a holder in the back that you can just pop out. You see those corners right there? Push those in and then pull out these pieces right here. And then your plants just slide right out. Let's see, look at that's just it's sliding right out. Might help if have this sitting down on something more stable. See, look at that. They just come right out. Some of the best plant packaging that you get when you order plants online. And there are the rubber bands. I'm gonna have so many rubber bands by the time this is done. So there's the packaging. That's the unboxing. It'd be redundant to go through every single plant and open them up. So I'm gonna get everything unpacked. I'm gonna talk about what's what's in here. Got some neat stuff. I suppose we'll start with the ones that are sleeping, right? These are dormant and not by any means the least exciting plant that I got, but I, there's, just, there's not much to look at. I'd start from, you know, more basic stuff and work our way up to the most exciting plants, but there's not much to show. We'll talk about them though. These are Amorphophallus. Amorphophallus konjac. Konjac, konjac, whatever you want to call it. It's a voodoo lily. This is one as hardy all the way to zone 6A. Maybe 5B with a good amount of mulch. These are a really cool hardy aeroid. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Amorphophallus titanum, the giant voodoo lily. These have a similar, well, they're not the same plant, obviously, but they're the same principle, right? So you're going to have a four to five foot single leaf. It's just one big stalk, it's like one big greenish to purple growth has like mottled speckling on it. Really interesting looking foliage. I got three of these because we'll look at this picture. Do you see that? How cool does that look? It's going to be years until we get to see anything like that but that's what I want. I need that in my life. The flowers on these, they can be like, I think up to 60 inches, five feet tall, something along those lines. I have everything up there on the screen so y'all can read and fact check me as we're going. There's a lot to memorize here for all these plants, but in general, it's just a very robust, beautiful flower that should show up, like I said, hopefully in about three to four years. It does say on there that the ones that they ship are quarter sized tubers that are about three to four years from blooming but they'll still put up some foliage and it's really neat looking foliage. So even when they're not in flower, they still look really cool. These are a great option for part sun to light shade and just like dappled light. That's what they're going to be getting. And I think that this is, it's going to take some time and some patience, but it's going to look so cool once they're up and doing their thing with those flowers. And even before that, I love the way it looks having a drift of the voodoo lily leaves. You need several of them for it to look really neat. I mean, just having one looks cool, but if you have several, it looks really cool. So I got three for right now. I'm probably gonna order a few more at some point, but you know, budget. There are a lot of other plants over here to show you. So that's why I just started with the three, but ultimately I would like maybe five to seven of them in a spot over there in that shade garden. And this is where I'm starting with those. The next plants I've got, they're all up here. Got them all spread out. Oh, I'm wondering, let's just go to the ferns. So I feel like people don't get excited about ferns, even though you should. Everybody should get excited about ferns. Ferns are awesome. But I said, we're gonna work our way up. So this is just, it's a Korean tassel fern. Polystichum polyblepherum. I believe that's the name of there. Like I said, it's up there on the screen. They go 18 inches tall, 5B to 9B. It's an evergreen type fern, a very 
beautiful fern. I love the Korean tessel ferns. The foliage on them is just very dramatic for a fern. All the little leaflets, the little pinules that are in there, and the deep green you get with them, the spores on the underside, they're a nice lush plant to have around. And evergreen that was the main thing so i wanted an evergreen fern there are a few to choose from for here in 6b 7a but i struggle with them because usually when i find them they're from a, like a big box store and uh, they tend to melt away during the summer when it's really hot that's something i really like about plant delights they're in north carolina and if they're growing well for them there which they say they are means they should grow just fine here in st louis heat wise that is so that's why I ordered it from them instead of just grabbing one from a random nursery because I generally see those coming from places like Oregon. Some of them come down from Canada, even uh, places further north, Michigan. A lot of the plants are grown up there and shipped down here. And they just, they don't do well when we have the heat. But this is from plants that are doing well for them with the heat. So that's why I got it. And look at how lovely and full this is. It's an absolutely beautiful fern. Look at all the character. They're fuzzy and they're green. They've got a lot going on for them. Not the fastest of growers, but I would expect in about two to three years for this to be probably double to triple the size. Something along those lines. Adds a lot of character and just gracefulness and lushness to the garden. I always like to have some ferns around, but they don't always like to stick around. And a lot of that has to do with where I'm getting them from. When I get them from Plant Delights, they usually do really well for me. A very nice, sturdy fern. They tend to be pretty long-lived once you have them established, low maintenance, part sun to shade, or really probably part shade to shade, I'm guessing for the tassel fern. Well, part sun to shade is what it says on the website. So chances are the hotter your climate, the more shade you're going to want to give them, or the drier your conditions. Okay, another fern. Look at that one. This got something fun going on down there. Oh, and part of the noise from the fan, camera kept overheating, so I had to turn it on. Thought maybe I could get away with a video without background fan but not happening <laughs> i love the, the beastly growing apex on this one this is a bronze flushed royal fern osmunda regalis purpurescens i think i don't know it's up there on the screen 3a to 10b again got this one because they're growing it well there which means it should do just fine here this is the deciduous fern unlike the korean fern the tassel fern. These are a very large, showy fern. <laughs> You'll be able to see that some. Considering what size pot this is, you probably can guess, right? That's going to be a really big plant. They say 48 inches high for this one, though up to 5 feet, 60 inches under ideal conditions. You know, nice, moist, well-drained, organically rich spot forms, really all they need. The main attractive thing about them is the purple bronze foliage, really, that you get with the new fronds and the fertile stems, the fertile fronds that come up are supposed to be very, very showy on these two. Just imagine like great big, huge, up to four foot tall, big old fern fronds. That's gonna look really neat. I feel like, can you even see it? I can't see my screen. The sun where there's shade right here, but I'm sitting in the sun. I think you get the point. It's been up there on the screen. So you get a picture of it, just a very nice lush tropical looking plant. That's what I love with my ferns is they just make an area feel more established and hydrated. Nice lush green plants. Ooh, this is a nice one. Let's talk about this one next. Rhodia, Rhodia japonica. And none of these look like much yet. You just gotta give them all time. These are really, really, really cool and sturdy plants. What you get with, depending on the type you're growing. Rhodia, it, there are lots and lots and lots of different types to choose from. In Japan, where these are from, they're a plant that are, some of them are very coveted. There are competitions and things where people show them and get awards for them. This one right here is just your regular old, just Japonica, hardy zone 6A to 10B. Some of them are gonna be more into the zone 7, 7B area. Just depends on which type you're getting. I thought I'd start with the basics and work my way up with this. So this one's only going to get about a foot tall, light shade to shade. These have a nice upright vase shape to them. And in the winter time, late fall into winter, I believe, I could be wrong about that, but they produce red flowers from around the base, have an interesting red berry look to them. And they should hold on to those most of the winter time. So you get some nice winter time interest because of that, especially because they're evergreen. So this is something that I wanted because they have a really nice tropical look to them. Just nice, big, strappy 
green leaves similar to a, like an espedistra, a cast iron plant that is, but I believe this will be more long-lived and reliable. The, the rhodias are plants that once you have them established, they'll be around for years. They're not the fastest of growers, but they are something that people, you can pass them down from generation to generation. They divide very, very easily, and there are so many different types to choose from. These are a plant that I highly recommend if you have a shaded area in your garden, particularly dry shade too, a spot where maybe some other things won't grow. I think they even said on their website that theirs are growing well under black walnut trees. I think that it said that, didn't it? I'm pretty sure it did, which means very sturdy, very tough, long-lived plants. I wanted to make sure to get some plants put into this new area that are going to be more fuss-free because a lot of the other plants are more experimental. Not necessarily the ferns, but even ferns can be hit or miss with our up and down, you know, days in the 70s and days where it's 100. Even during winter, we can have days in the 60s and low 70s. And then a week later, this happened last winter, it was like negative 12. The plants don't tend to like that, especially the evergreens. That's why I started with just a regular japonica. There's no variegation on it. There's nothing that's going to make it more fragile, basically. And they're just nice big green leaves. What's not to love about that? So much to enjoy about just nice, shiny, big, green, strappy leaves. Beautiful plant. That should be one that's going to be around for a very long time. Okay, who's next? Okay, this next one's looking a little rough around the edges, which is not normal for plant delights. In fact, I don't think I've ever gotten a plant from them before and said that I was disappointed in it. I've been ordering from them since 2008. This is the first time. So this is the exception, not the rule. These did ship out during a very, very, very hot week, uh, which was my choice. I chose the shipping date and I knew it was going to be hot. So uh, it's, just, it's a little crispy and a little bit wobbly in the pot, but that's okay because this is a vigorous grower. This is agave ovatifolia. The uh, ovatifolia is one that has really wide, kind of a steel blue color to their leaves. I said that very oddly. It's up on the screen. You can see it. And that one in their picture is not even that big. These get huge, about three feet tall to five feet wide, a really squat, just beautiful rosette on them. 7A to 9B, obviously they like sun. It's an agave. You can probably go down to part sun, but just remember that the less sun that an agave is getting, any succulent in general, the better the drainage needs to be and the more protection it's going to need during the winter time. And the less water you should give it overall. This is not for the shade garden, right? This is just something that I wanted. I'm gonna keep it in a container. The thing that has drawn me to this one isn't just the beautiful appearance. I've always wanted it in Ovatifolia in general. They're just really pretty agaves, but they describe it as being one that seems particularly tolerant of cold, moist climates compared to many other century plants that they've grown. That is really good to know, even though it says 7A at least, that doesn't mean we can't give it a try. I'm gonna need to grow it out for a few years and then I will treat it like I do my windmill palms and mule palms and my other cold hardy plants that I keep containerized and they're out here for most of the year. But when we have really extreme cold, so say below probably 20 to 15, cause it will be in a container, it will go inside. Or if there's ever going to be moisture, snow, ice, rain even when it's going to be cold outside. I'll just scoot it inside. I'm going to be kicking myself in a few years because this is going to be very big and very spiky and not fun to move around, but it'll be worth it. They're such fun, cool looking agaves. This is not for the shade garden. It was just an, I wanted it, so I got it kind of plant. There's another one of those over here too. Oh, look at those furry leaves. That's a nice looking leaf. This is the Saxifraga. Saxifraga stolonifera. The variety is called Nezu Jinja. This plant might seem familiar to the houseplant lovers. Commonly sold as the strawberry begonia as a houseplant. You find these at big box stores and hanging baskets all the time. This one is special. You can maybe see why. If you've seen those strawberry begonias in those hanging baskets, look at this. You see what's different? Nice big leaves on this one. The, the variety for this one is called the <laughs> Nezu Jinja. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Here's the description. 3A to 9B, five inches tall, evergreen, part sun to shade. This particular variety is special because it has nice large foliage. Typically it goes, I think, two to three inches is more normal on a strawberry begonia. This one they say goes up to six inches. There's a picture there with a coin sitting on top of a leaf, I believe. I don't know, I don't have the computer in front of me, but y'all are seeing it. You can see what's going on there. They spread wonderfully. This is a very nice cold hardy ground cover. And in May, they have 
little white flowers that come up about a foot high above the foliage. Just a fun plant. This is a beautiful ground cover, isn't it? I love the hairy leaves, the trichomes. It's going to be a good spreader and it's evergreen, which is one of the reasons I got it. I want a mixture of little evergreens and big evergreens and deciduous things. And we have the voodoo lilies, which will be dormant for a big portion of the year. They don't tend to come up here until like June. So there will be patches of color mixed in where there are plants sleeping in the ground. Did y'all know that this was a house plant or that it was a perennial, I should say? That, yeah, that makes more sense. Yet when you see those strawberry begonias in those hanging baskets at the big box stores, you can pop those in your garden in the shade. They're very, very, very easy to grow. They will last a long time. They fill in very nicely. They have a shallow rhizome on them, so they're easy to control. If they start to take over, move to spots you don't want them to be in, you can just pull them right out. So it's not a ground cover that's going to absolutely take over and just eat your garden alive. It's easy to maintain the shape of the patch that you want to have in the ground. Just a fun one. I really like these. It's going to be interesting to see how that fills out. You have a nice big patch of those nice, fun, round leaves. They're kind of stiff and upright with that veining. I love the veining, too. I didn't talk about that. Nice color in there. Good color on the veining. It's hard to find ground covers that have big, broad leaves that are evergreen. So the further, I guess, north you are, the more cold your climate, then the more potential there's going to be for there to be some winter dieback. You know, I try and think of it kind of like a hookara where they're typically evergreen, but maybe towards late winter, you might start to see some dieback or they may look a little bit ratty. Is, I guess the way to say it, raggedy. And maybe need to clean them up and cut them back some if you have a really, really, really harsh winter. But for the most part, 3A to 9B, that's a pretty sturdy plant. I don't think that there should be much dieback on them. Y'all like May apples? How about this May apple? I'm sorry, that wasn't funny. I shouldn't have done that. This is a Potophyllum hybrid. So I guess I could maybe talk about May apples a little bit. May apples, Potophyllum, is a plant with a lot of different species. I believe their native range goes from somewhere in the Middle East, Afghanistan, I believe, over into China. And then there are the North American May apples, which go from Canada down all the way, I think, down to Texas. They have a very broad range and pretty interesting plants. The ones in North America have a, a short leaf that is heavily split, comes up just maybe a foot or so above the ground, and they go dormant in the summer. They spread very, very, very heavily. This right here is the Potophyllum exboriform may. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Standing tall. It's a hybrid may apple. Here's the info from the website. You can see nice and big and also why it's called standing tall, 42 inches tall. That's what drew me to this plant, is the massive proportion on it, a very unusual potophyllum. And this being a hybrid, it's not one that's going to go dormant during the summer, like the American types will, which I believe is Peltata. I'm not positive. That's neither here nor there. We need to go into all of that. But just listen to that description. It makes a very tall plant to three and a half feet, composed of thick stems bearing massive 25-inch jagged cut green leaves that just sounds awesome doesn't it and they flower in early spring that continues sporadically through the summer the flower clusters hang just beneath the leaves each cluster of over two dozen round red flowers is quite spectacular starts for them in north carolina around march and continues through summer so you get a show from them too they keep putting on flowers so the flowers do hang generally just below the foliage so you kind of got to look for them but it's still interesting. And I have had been talking about when I was doing things in past vlogs with that shade garden about some plants like Farfugiums and wanting some really big, bold texture over there. And uh, I saw this and I was like, well, that just seems like a really cool, unique May apple that I think will look really neat in the shade garden. They tend to be pretty long lived. This one, uh, as I said, isn't going to spread and take over as much. They should form little patches wherever you plant them as opposed to just filling in the entire area. 42 inches tall, that's pretty tall. This is about 42 inches tall right here. I would say this fan, which I'll go widescreen. There we go. That's pretty big, three and a half feet. That is going to look very interesting in the garden. Those great big giant round cup shaped leaves. It's almost an alien like plant. Potophyllums are really neat. There are tons of them to choose from. If you have a woodland garden or a shady area part sun to full shade really probably part shade to shade 
I don't know, that's going to depend on your climate. The hotter and drier, the more shade they're going to need for sure. But they definitely are plants that grow in the shade. You think about where they grow in nature, it's going to be the understory of the woods is mostly where you find them. They flush up, do their thing, they put on a show with their flowers, and then uh, around the heat of the summer and when the trees are fully flushed out, at least the American variety, the Peltata, that goes dormant. So it's like, yeah, we're not getting any sun, we already did our thing, we'll just chill until next year. So that's a great option if you want something that's gonna fill in a nice area with some really big, interesting leaves. Speaking of interesting leaves, you gotta see the next one. This next one, it has really, really cool foliage. And it's a plant I've had my eye on at Plant Delights for a very long time. I'm letting it drip, give them all a drink. You know, they were in a box, it's important. Give them some water. Look at this one, those leaves, it's particularly this one. Isn't that a neat leaf? Absolutely beautiful. And this is nothing compared to what I'm hoping to get to see out of this one as this one grows. This is another Podophyllum. Gosh, it's so pretty. I'm gonna put the info up here on the screen so you can get a better picture of what to expect from the foliage, but I don't, don't, I don't, leave me alone about the price. I told y'all I wanted this garden to have some very unusual and unique plants. Sometimes that's gonna come at a cost. I've wanted one of these for such a long time and I think that this is just the perfect plant to have in that area where I want very unique and unusual plants to be growing. Look at that leaf, those leaves, uh, I should say. Uh, yeah, I mentioned it's another podophyllum, right? It's a deformed leaf, may apple. This one's a 6B to 8B, so not as cold hardy as a lot of the other ones are. Same thing as the other podophyllum, shouldn't go dormant during the summertime like the native ones do. This one goes 20 inches tall, so really nice, big, tall foliage on it that is extremely dramatic. But look at those leaves, look how dramatic they are. They say that this one is unique because of the purple patterning on the top side, which you can see in those pictures, right? That purpley, bronzy hue with that silvery variegation that runs through the middle and a very unique leaf shape, which I think they described as quadrangle. I think that's the word they use. Look at that, it's just, it's such a cool looking leaf. And these don't even, they're not colored up. And remember everything that's here was, they were in greenhouses and in a shade house, right? So they're going to color up as time passes. I talked about that with the galactic traveler agaves back there in my last plant haul from Plant Delights that when you give them the outdoor conditions, it's when the color and things really start to shine and really just getting them in the ground. Something I didn't mention, I don't think, with the other podophyllum is that they are plants that do like an organically rich, slightly moist, well-drained site. So uh, that area where I'm planting things up does tend to have more dry soil. It is very rich, but it is more dry. So I'm going to have to be very mindful of where I put them, mainly just that they're in line with the sprinkler systems. My sprinklers in that area back there are very odd. They don't hit very evenly, but there are some sections where they hit very well and then other sections that they just completely miss. And uh, that's kind of why I have a variety of plants here that are going to go from dry shade to more, not necessarily moist shade, but the hydrated, so that, that didn't make sense. And that's why I have a selection of plants here that are plants that can take the dry shade and plants that can, well, really need, I should say, more moist conditions because I have various areas and there's a slope. So, you know, water moves and everything. And I'll get irrigation set up on there next year anyways. This year I'll be hand watering everything just to be really certain that everything's getting a nice drink and it getting some time to establish themselves before they go dormant for their first winter. But like I, I thought I should mention that they do like a slightly moist soil since a lot of the other plants I've talked about, I've mentioned them being plants that can take the dry shade. These, eh, I don't know about dry shade. They're gonna want some moisture. And then another note, tracing back to the standing tall podophyllum. I may have it wrong about whether or not that one goes dormant during the summer. I'm not positive. So I tried my best to memorize these descriptions before I filmed the video. And uh, the writing was only there for the deforme for this one over here about them not going dormant during the winter time or it's the summertime. But I don't, I don't know for sure about this one over here. I would be surprised since it's a hybrid. It's a hybrid with the boriforme, but I, don't know, I guess we'll find out. I think it's because the description said that the flowers start for them in March and continue through September. That's what made me think that they must not do the dormancy that like the native peltatas do. 
because those tend to go dormant generally like by July, depending on where you live, really June, a lot of places. So I, I don't know. We'll find out. I, I don't think it will though. I would be surprised. Yeah. I just think that because this one is a cross between the bore form, bore form and the die form. Since it has the die form in there, it shouldn't, I don't, I don't know if the bore form, but we don't need to, but we'll, like I said, it's going to pan out. We'll figure it out. I don't believe either of those are ones that go dormant. We can move on to the next one. The last one. Look at it. It's spiky. It's got some good color in there too. Beautiful variegation. Very thirsty plants. It's an agave. Agave Desmetiana Joe Hoke. Now, I talked about this one in my last plant video when I got the Galactic Travelers that are back here that Plant Delights, they have an amazing selection of particularly variegated agaves, but agaves in general, they have tons of them. And how the Joe Hoke was one that I have wanted. And then I saw they had it when I was making that video, when I put up on the screen, sure what I was talking about. So I ordered it. Gonna need some time and a repot right away. This thing's ready for a nice big bump up. Look at the girth on this. It's gonna be very happy to get into a new container. So the, it's just a pretty agave. <laughs> really know what else to say about it. This is not for the shade garden at all. This is a tropical plant. They're going to want sun. They're about three feet tall, and this comes from a nursery in South Florida. Uh, it's Joe Hoke of Hoke's Nursery. So the person who brought this plant about has glaucous gray leaves bordered in cream and surrounded by a dark green edge. You see the picture, right? I mean, come on, that's just an absolutely stunning agave. The variegation on that is so pretty. I love when variegation gives you various shades of green and cream and not so much harsh yellows. I find it to be more peaceful, calm, and soothing of a variegation than the harsh yellows that you see with a lot of other variegated yuccas and agaves. This is not a yucca. Variegated agaves and yuccas. You know what I'm saying? I've been talking too much. The brain stopped working. We have a disconnect going on between the mouth and the brain at this point. <laughs> it's a lot to memorize to try and make sure I have those descriptions down. You see it. It's a beautiful plant. A little bit of TLC going to be needed for both of the agaves, but not much. These are both agaves that are very sturdy. So a couple of waterings and get them moved out into the, I'm going to start with part sun and they will be looking good as new in no time. And this one particularly should put on a good amount of growth. Can't wait to see that. So this one's not going to be like the uh, one I showed before, the Ovetifolia, where I'm going to be leaving it outside until it's like 20 degrees, depending on precipitation. This is a tropical. I already mentioned that, but I just wanted to make sure to bring that point home. We're going to be treating this as a houseplant. Agaves make wonderful houseplants. Spiky house plants, but good house plants. The main thing with them is just don't water them very much during the winter time. And as long as your soil's draining really well and they're not sitting in water, if it's warm outside and sunny, you can water them to your heart's content. That's what's fun about them is they are a succulent. They do like dry or do, I should say, do well in drier conditions, but they can take plenty of precipitation and water as long as things are warm, sunny, and they have some airflow. And again, never sitting in water. That's just the kiss of death. This has been fun. So in the last two plant hauls, I've managed to knock off a few wishlist plants I've wanted for a long time. The Galactic Traveler Agave. It's a beauty. Love the coloration on it. Silvery blue, kind of sparkly with that chartreuse, yellowy outline. The Joe Hoke, which is beautiful. That's kind of, I can't, I'm so looking forward to seeing that one do some growing. It's such a nice looking agave. And that's nice and big too. I'm really happy with the size on that one. And then the diform, podophyllum. Just those leaves, this is just in a four inch container. That's 20 inches tall. That's nice stiff cupped foliage, that very irregular shape to them and that variegation. Oh, that's gonna look so neat. And there it is. Lots of fun new plants. <laughs> very distracted. Got a stalker over here. Looking forward to getting these planted, which will be happening soon. That's a nice change of pace too. The weather's now cooperating. More mild temperatures can start plopping things in the ground and get moving on that shade garden, especially now that I have the rest of the plants. Really fun, nice plants. Look at that leaf. That's such a cool leaf. Got the big booty royal fern over here. Tons of texture with the Korean tassel fern. Awesome. 
beautiful large leaved evergreen ground covers, nice strappy foliage. I'm liking this palette here. It's the agave, it's kind of destroyed in the palette. It doesn't belong here, but you get it. Hope y'all don't mind the informality of just sitting on the couch and holding the plants in hand. I kind of liked it that way. When it comes to plants, I do think it's nice to be able to just sit back and be like, hey, let's talk about them and keep it a little bit less formal and relaxed that way. Uh, also, just because there's just, there's so many projects. <laughs> I don't have my nice setup going on right now where I can use the tripod and everything. I needed some shade. It's worked out well. Okay, that's going to do it. Comment down below. What are some of your favorites? You like these plants? You have experience growing some of these plants? I'm sure plenty of y'all been growing Podophyllums and maybe the rhodias, perhaps the saxifragas, uh, Korean tessel ferns, they're pretty common. Yeah, just let us know. Let's know what's going on in your gardens and some fun stuff you might have going on for your fall activities. Any fun fall planting projects? There's so much to do this time of year. It's not, I'm not done planting yet. I have people ask me, why are you still planting things? I'm like, well, why would I, why would I stop planting? There's no need to. Depending on the plant. There are some plants that I don't plant when it's warm outside, but we're moving to that time of year where we're going to start having some cooler temperatures in the evening and the ground's nice and warm. Precipitation's going to start picking up here soon. So this is a good time to be getting things in the ground. Making moves, getting that garden up and going. Okay, as always, and most importantly, everybody, look at that. Look at the color. There's so much color in there. Keep on growing. Bye-bye.